Heather Irvine and welcome to Go Your Own Way, OSI's very own series of web videos to make sure that you get the most out of your time in the outdoors. Today we're talking safety. Now don't be put off because I know you think there's a lot to this, but really it's not as scary as it sounds. All you need are a couple of things and you can make the most out of your time on whatever expedition you're doing. I've got two lovely candidates today, John and Dermot, and I'm gonna show them how to stay safe in the outdoors. And we've got a couple of things in store for you that'll make it a little more entertaining. We should get dressed since we've got a home of all these famous things that I'm so Okay, so we're going to head for a nice little walk down the coast here and then to reward you for all your efforts, we're going to end up in a cove and go kayaking. Does that sound good? That'd be great. Okay, but before we set off, there's a couple of things. Now, I, everyone always switches off, right, when you talk safety, but no switching off today Okay. because it's not as boring as it sounds. You actually only need a couple of things in your backpack to make sure that you're going to arrive down at that cove in one piece today. Ideally, if you're looking to get a waterproof jacket, something light that you can just throw into your backpack. This one here is really good, it's fully waterproof, but as you can see, it's, it's pretty light, so it's not, gonna, it's not gonna weigh you down and stuff. So that's, that's kind of the aim of the game with a lot of your gear that you want. A pair of waterproof pants, keep the legs warm. Mm -hmm. Something easy to put on, so zips at the bottom are always a good idea. Now, this is one of the most important things, right, <laughs> that you want, is the layer next to your skin, right? Because that's the layer that's gonna keep you warm if you sweat, mm -hmm. it's gonna wick away your sweat. So you want something, this is a really nice little thermal top. Inside here, there's a silver lining, so that works with your own body's heat to heat you up when you're cold, but also the, the spaces between it allow air out, so okay. it'll keep you kind of cool, so it's keeping your temperature nice and steady. A good pair of gloves, keep the fingers warm. Mm -hmm. A woolly hat, this one I think would look particularly good on you. Then obviously I think the two most important things if you're going to put anything into your backpack is a map and compass. Yeah. If you get lost, you're a goner. Yeah. So map, compass, that's what'll get you home, okay? So that should be one of the first things that goes into your bag. You should always have, say your mobile phone and make sure it's fully charged. It's the same number as you ring for emergency services if you do need the mountain rescue teams. Having a survival bag, it's something small, but if you pop it in, it just means that if something does happen, if you twist your ankle or you just find yourself getting stranded, you can sit inside that. It's gonna keep you warm. It'll keep the elements at bay and that will get you a few hours of same survival. Life. Exactly, yes, yeah. so it's a small thing, but really, really important. Um, a head torch is always a handy thing, it's small but good to pop in the bag. You should be planning out your route in advance. So you should know if you're gonna be out past darkness, yeah. but just in case something does happen that you're not, you're not quite expecting. You just need a first aid kit with all the basics. You don't need to go wild, you know, but just make sure you've got pl uh, plasters, some bandages in there in case something does happen. Now, water and food. This probably isn't the most nutritious, but something in your bag just to give you a bit of fuel. If you're planning to go out for a long time, you know, you just plan, think about what you need. If you're out for eight hours, you obviously need more food. If you're out for two, just a little snack in the bag, just in case. And then obviously some water is key too. So, and that's really all you need in your bag. The other thing I would recommend that I have here is just a dry bag. It's brilliant just to put inside your backpack. It just means it keeps all of your gear Dry. Nice and dry, mm -hmm. yeah. And if you're going out in winter, there's just a couple of other key things. You know, you want, might want to put in a fleece like this, a nice lightweight fleece, just as an extra layer, if it does get a little bit colder towards the end of the day. But if you have those basic things, you won't go too far wrong. Okay, so we've planned a pretty, pretty good little route here using the map. So we're gonna go all the way along the cliffs here and end up just here in this little cove. Cool. Any idea how long that'll take? What distance it is? What is it? One square is what? Is that a kilometre? Yes, yeah, so we're about... So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight kilometres. About eight kilometres. Yeah, eight, nine kilometres. So that'll mm. take us probably about... Two days. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of hours. And about an hour and a half. An hour and a half. We'll yeah. tip over at a very okay Sweet, pace. Okay. things 
things that we could think about just safety wise while you are out walking. Today we've had a pretty leisurely walk but it's kind of handy to use your OSI maps so you can plan your route in advance and the reason that's important is you kind of want to know how far you're going to be going mm. you know mm. like you might look at a map and you might think oh that looks grand it's actually you know a seven hour hike and you're going over two mountains so using things like contours on the maps using the scale on the map is really important to plan your route in advance mm. the other thing is for anyone who's seen 127 hours I think we all learned that lesson that you need to tell people where you're going in advance. So if you are heading out, maybe just, you know, let a buddy know that you're kind of going to be in the area and you'll be out for this amount of time so they do know if... Uh, always bring a hacksaw. Yes, yeah. or Leatherman yeah. I hear yeah. works pretty well. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other thing is, is that you should always try and walk with someone else because going out on your own is just in case you do kind of go over on your ankle and twist Ooh. it or something like that. It's always good to have a buddy. Well, yeah. for company, you know? Of course. So we've spent the morning talking about how to stay safe in the great outdoors. We've been for a bit of a walk and with all good walks comes a good reward. And today we've got an amazing reward. We're here with Mick O'Mara from seapaddling.com. He's about to bring these lads out to the Copper Coast here behind us. But first he's going to tell us a couple of things about how we stay safe in the water and what's ahead of us this morning. All right, well, what we're doing is um, we're here in, in Bowstrand. You've, you've got here by foot and we're going to take a tour of the Copper Coast here. And the lovely thing about where we are here today is that we're just in Bowstrand, which is on Dunabratton Head here, and we're pretty much in the middle of the Copper Coast. So we can go anyway from here. We can head back towards, back towards Tremor, or we can head up towards Dungarvan. The nice thing about using a, um, an Ordnance Survey map here for this is that we can actually, first of all, pick out a location here. And it's about staying safe here, because half the battle here with, with kayaking is all about picking your location so that you're sheltered from the wind, especially when we're going out on the sea as we are today. So we're in Dunbratton Head here, and we're in, a, in, as I said, in a place called Bowstrand here, which the wind we know today is blowing from the west, so we're pretty much sheltered from the wind here. Whereas if we came around here or launched from any other spot around here, we'd be pretty much exposed to the wind. Okay. So the nice thing is that once we get on the water, we can get into a nice sheltered location like we have outside here and just ease into the kayak and, and then we'll see where we go from there. Okay, the second thing we can use the, the map for here as well, and I'm using it as a set of dividers here, is that we have nice kilometre squares on the map. And these things here give you some sense of scale and how, and how long the trip is going to be. And as novice kayakers, mm -hmm. as you guys are going to be paddling, it maybe four kilometers an hour which is not too far off two and a half miles an hour so yeah. it's not really very really fast not too slow but it's about an average speed as you can go here and the nice thing about this is that when we use the dividers on here i can say okay one two three four that's about an hour's paddle okay okay so instead of guessing how long it's going to take us here we can just decide that we're going to go for let's say an hour that way and now we're back to way. It's going okay. to be a two-hour trip, which is again is about nice, is a nice trip for, mm. for, for an office here this morning. Okay? Yeah. The, the, I suppose the key advantage here of using one of these maps here is that when you're in a location like this, and out in a rural location, particularly on the coast, there's not always phone reception. There's not always 3G <laughs> reception out here. So when your phone or where you're sat nav and when your, your device We've doesn't work here... We've learned that first here, hand, Mick. No, yeah. no phone reception out here. Phone reception, <laughs> you, you, you can always depend on the map. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, combined with a compass here, is pretty difficult to get lost here. And then I suppose the final thing I would use these things for is that I'll take this with me, we we'll strap it onto the kayaks in a waterproof case here. And what we'll use it for is actually showing entry and exit points okay. along the coastline along here so again from a safety point of view because just because we head off today here who knows that in a half an hour someone can get an upset tummy or maybe you know feel a little bit queasy seasickness and stuff like that maybe if you had a breakfast or not so somebody might want to get off so once again we're in Bowstrand here we can look at uh, various points to get out along, on, along the way because we've got the coast road running along here yeah. so again we know that within a kilometre of here we can get out of the point here we know from uh, you know within a kilometre of going the other way yeah. we can get all these places to get in there so where a car can get down and get you so again fantastic So we've seen today 
today we've seen lots of ways to stay safe in the outdoors. We've seen how staying safe in the outdoors, you can really make the most of it and find hidden gems like this one here that we have down at the Copper Coast. I think over the last couple of days we've seen so much just by using simple things like a map and a compass mm -hmm. can just make you go so much further. So I'm sure we've got a couple more adventures in store, but time for the pub now, lads, yeah? Definitely. <laughs>